You're watching the CP News weekly video brought to you by Erna Berry's upcoming Insight Spotlight on the Road to Recovery and Food Service, taking place on July 27th and 28th. This online event will feature two live sessions, two podcasts, and two in-depth analysis pieces, all available within the Comtel platform under the Insights section. Comtel subscribers already have access to the Spotlight, but non-subscribers can register to gain temporary access to Comtel and the free Insight Spotlight. Get more information and register through our story on seafoodnews.com. I'm Seafood News Managing Editor Amanda Buckle. And I'm Erner Berry Market Reporter Lauren Castiglione. In our top story, a resurgence of COVID-19 cases continues for a second week in Alaska with over 450 new cases since Friday and an increase in the number of hospitalizations across the state. But fishing communities that dot Alaska's coastline are having very different experiences with keeping the virus at bay. Sitka Fire Chief Craig Warren said that both unvaccinated and vaccinated people are contracting COVID, but Sitka's unvaccinated population of around 2,000, which does not include children under 12, is experiencing three times as many cases in the same period. Cordova is experiencing similar cases. Both communities are encouraging people, whether they are vaccinated or not, to wear a mask and keep a six-foot distance from others. Meanwhile, the fishing communities like Dillingham and Petersburg have relaxed mask mandates and quarantine restrictions. In other news, Vietnam is the latest country to enact emergency restrictions following a new spike in COVID-19 cases. Vietnam has been reporting over 4,000 new cases daily since July 15th. Now, provinces in southern Vietnam are applying Directive 16, which the government enacted to tackle the rising cases. Directive 16 mandates the closure of non-essential businesses and restaurants and bans public gatherings and severely limits transportation services. While seafood processors are considered essential businesses, the closures still have a pretty big impact on them. Factories must provide production in place, eat in place, and sleeping in place for their workforces. Those that cannot provide these three things must halt production. As for the logistics side of things, there continues to be congestion for both air and ocean cargo in Vietnam due to the emergency restrictions impacting labor. In addition, drivers in certain corridors must present a negative COVID-19 certificate, which is leading to extra costs and longer wait times. Meanwhile, the Washington Department of Health has linked the recent heat waves that left millions of shellfish dead to the historic number of Vibrio cases the state has reported in July. The state said the high temperatures and low tides of late could be the reason behind the increased rate of Vibrio that is related to consuming raw or undercooked shellfish. So far for the month of July, Washington's Department of Health has reported 52 Vibrio cases, which is the highest total ever for the month. About half of those cases are linked with commercial oysters, and four were harvested recreationally. The illnesses have led to a recall of oyster shell stock harvested from a growing area in Skagit County. And finally, Long John Silver's has become the first seafood chain to feature plant-based seafood thanks to a partnership with Gathered Foods, the manufacturer of Good Catch plant-based seafood products. Good Catch's plant-based breaded fish-free filet and plant-based breaded crab-free cake will be available at five locations in California and Georgia. Christopher Caldo, the VP of Marketing at Long John Silver's, said that the restaurant is proud to have Good Catch's plant-based products on their menu as a way to open their doors to a wider customer base who wants to experience tasty seafood produced in a more sustainable way. Subscribe to our channel below and be sure to head over to seafoodnews.com or visit the Seafood tab in Comtel for a comprehensive look at the latest market and industry news. And don't forget to listen to a new episode of the Seafood News Podcast released on Spotify, SoundCloud, and iTunes every week. Thanks for watching and you be well. well.